Welcome back, everybody. I'm Mike Vincent, and I'm joined now with, by Andrew Cox, and we're going to talk a little point of sale. Are we not, my friend? That's right. Awesome. You laid some knowledge on us. I love this. What do we got going on? Yeah, so yesterday I wrote about retail sales. So we got the April retail sales data from the, from the U.S. Commerce Department last week. And I think the headlines were a little bit scarier than they should have been. They came okay. out something like April retail sales flat, missing expectations. And mm. I don't think that really caught the full story because okay. we're, we're really comparing to wacky denominators here. If you go month over month, we're comparing to March where retail sales grew almost 11%. So not seeing any growth on top of March is, is not, um, it's not bad. It's not anything to say that the economy is sputtering. And then if you look at the year-over-year -year number, you think, oh, we're up 37.2% year-over-year. Well, that's comparing to April 2020 when the vast majority of retail stores were closed and we were stuck in our homes. Yeah, so year-over-year -year comparison really doesn't work right now, right? I mean, Correct. it's going to take a while for that to really mean something, right? I mean, you look at it and see what it was, but you've got to take it in the right context. Yeah, we've got about right? five, six months here until we get into the, the later half of the you. year, into like the last quarter, really, of the year to yeah. where year-over-year -year comps actually mean something. But until then, we've got to look at two-year comps. So I've got the two-year comp here for you comparing uh, April 2020 to April, April 2021 to April 2019. Okay, and you can good. see you know, relatively healthy uh, growth across all sectors except for department stores. And department stores have been in decline for more than a decade. We've had the That's last- specifically brick and mortar from the department yes, stores, Yes, correct, right? brick and mortar. Okay. E-commerce was up, uh, I think, 40%. Total retail sales up 22% over mm -hmm. 2019. So really strong growth uh, in the two-year comp. Gotcha, so what does this mean? Well, it's, good. it's a good thing for freight markets. If you turn to the Bank of America um, consumer spending data, which is a little bit gotcha. more timely, we can get some really good insights on the goods to services mix, which is what we've all been eyeballing for so long. The, the big questions everybody's trying to answer is when that reversion back to services will yeah, be. Yeah, when, when is that flip going to happen? Have we and seen anything? Honestly, the way I'm looking at it now, the longer that this goes on, the longer I feel that I'm just going to get bored of report, reporting on it because it's going to be so <laughs> gradual, you won't even be able to tell. So it's I've not got this be a chart. Light switch. No, not okay. at all. I've got this chart from Bank of America comparing goods. A durable goods to services spending mix. And it's been almost exactly the same for about four weeks now. This is really good news for freight market participants, both shippers and carriers. This yeah. is welcome news because honestly, the mix is as important as the growth right now. Yeah, right. It, it absolutely is. The, the mix, especially when you get into LTA, LTL and parcel, that mix can make or break you, right? We saw that early on in a pandemic when LTL carriers were really in some serious trouble not because their volumes really went away, but because the mix, the product changed, right? Right. And this certainly isn't something that's going to last forever. It's going to be something that I'm watching very closely over the next few months is when do we see this convergence between, because right now we're running durable goods spending up about 40% over the two year, and we've got yeah. service spending just basically in line, uh, up one or two percent. That is going to converge, especially as lower income spending starts to wane and we have vacations ramping up in the, the summer and the back half of the year. It will converge. But the good thing is that these freight markets are insulated from this volatility and from this convergence because of the inventories. We also got the March inventory data that came in last week right. as well. And we have the inventory to sales ratio that has fallen even further from February. So February is at 1.3. We fell to 1.23 in March. That's the lowest point on record and in the FRED database dating back to 1992. So even when wow. that reversion happens, we've got a lot. We've got months, potentially even years of inventory restocking. So all this, this freight tsunami, as Henry Byer, Byers calls it, you know, coming into the ports, right? Uh, uh, the, all the maritime up, the air freight up, et cetera it's not having a dent in the inventory to sales ratio. No, it's actually, it's actually coming down because we saw inventories tick up in March, yeah, I think up like 0.3%, but you saw sales grow 11%. So <laughs> that's, you're dealing with the, these, these retailers and these importers are bringing in goods as fast as they possibly can, but they're not even keeping shelves stocked. Right? Yeah, so it, what, I mean, I guess what we're, we're, you're saying here or, or implying is that even if you see, start to see this switch, this convergence between goods and, and services, right? You start to see the switch start to take effect, which you said it would be gradual. But even if you saw it where it was like obvious, boom, it's mm -hmm. happening today, there's still uh, going to be a time where I mean, freight is just going to be elevated because inventories are just not there. They're not replenishing. Right. That, they're not replenishing. And on top of that, I've, from industry checks that I've heard and from a conversation I had with the COO of Duke Realty last week, he says that, the, that his customers that are using their warehouses are actually looking to carry more inventory into the future. This is, we talked about this at the beginning uh, of the pandemic, just in the case just in time, just in case. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And he's saying that is a plan for retailers moving forward. So, I mean, we have this restocking. We also have plans for higher inventories moving forward. Mm -hmm. 
You should have a lot be, of freight. Being should it be buying my Christmas presents now? Uh, I, I think that the, the industry will be in a good place okay. uh, for on-time deliveries. I mean, it might be a good idea to shop a little bit early, given gotcha. that you know Amazon's doing an early Prime Day this year, uh, and they're going to start that holiday season even earlier this year. So it might not be a bad idea, but wow, I think even more than on-time days? deliveries. Yeah, the, well, they're, they're doing it in June this year. Oh, yeah. Well, perfect. There you go. That's about how much time I need. Hey, <laughs> thank you so much. Check out Point of Sale. Uh, it is excellent. Uh, I highly recommend you, you read it every week.